Hello and welcome to Serendipity. I'm Jesslyn Wheelis from the Summit Library. Today's program is entitled Tuck and Tacky on the Tundra. First, we go all the way up to the North Pole to the Alaskan Tundra, where Tuck and his Inuit family are held hostage by a huge, hungry polar bear. Then we go all the way down to the South Pole to Antarctica to find Tacky the Penguin participating in the Winter Games. Will he win the gold? We'll find out. Where I grew up in North Carolina, I didn't have snow very much at all. It rarely ever snowed and so we were always looking out the window in the wintertime and wishing it would snow. So I have taken a song called Mr. Sandman and changed the words to Mr. Snowman. Mr. Snowman, send us some snow. We like to slide on our sleds, don't you know? Send us some ice so we can go skating. Oh, Mr. Snowman, please don't keep us waiting. Snowman, you like snow too. We'll make a pretty snow lady for you. So please, please don't say no. Mr. Snowman, send us. Please, please send us, Mr. Snowman. Send us some snow. The title of this story from the Inuit people is How Tuck Saved His Family. Tuck was a young boy who lived with his family in a land of snow and ice. They lived inside their ice house, an igloo, and he and his little sister and mother and father were cozy and warm there all through the coldest, windiest parts of the year. Now, if you think about it, long ago, there up in the Arctic, Tuck didn't have video games to play. He didn't have TV. He didn't have Netflix. All he had was a carving knife and some wood, precious wood that they had found that he carved. And every day and night, as they sat there warm inside their igloo, he carved. He carved toys for his little sister. Uh, he carved little dolls and little animals, seals, and he even carved a polar bear once. And his little sister would play with these toys. As the years went by and Tuck grew older, he got better and better at his carving. One day when he carved a face, his mother said, Tuck, that looks just like your little sister. How did you do that? You're an artist. Tuck was proud and he loved carving. Now, at 12 years old, Tuck's father finally said that Tuck was old enough to go with him out on the hunt. The hunt could be dangerous. And so before age 12, he had never allowed Tuck to come with him. Tuck was so happy, so excited. He could hardly sleep the night before. But he and his father woke early. They went out and prepared the sled and they brought the dogs out and tied them up to the sled. Oh, the dogs were jumping about and barking. They loved to pull the sled. And this was a happy day for them as well as for Tuck. So off they went. They were going as far as they could, close to where the sea was. Then when Tuck's father saw something far up ahead, he, at, he stopped the dogs. And quietly, he motioned to Tuck to be very quiet. He took his spear and he started crawling, yes, crawling, so that the animal he was after wouldn't see him coming. It was a seal. And a seal is an animal that they needed for their food. They couldn't grow gardens there and grow vegetables, not in the Arctic where everything was ice and snow 
There were no grocery stores where they could buy food, so they had to hunt for their food. That's the only way they could eat. And so his father was creeping closer and closer to the seal with his spear ready. The seal did not see him coming. But the father did not know that as he crept closer and closer to the seal, an enormous polar bear was creeping closer and closer to father. Father did not know that, but Tuck did. Tuck jumped into the sled and told the dogs to run. They ran as fast as they could, picked up the father on the sled and raced home with the polar bear dashing close behind them. When they got to their igloo, they tossed the sled aside and all ran inside the ice house. Even the two dogs. They figured the dogs would keep help to keep them warm and they didn't have time to put the dogs away because of the bear. Now the polar bear stopped and waited beside the ice house. They could see him through the little ice window they had. He waited and waited. When he was tired, he would lie down on the snow, but he kept looking at the ice house hungrily. What were they going to do? The mother said, I don't know what we can do. We can't get out because he's blocking our doorway into our igloo. What on earth are we going to do? And they thought and they thought. And that night, when mother and father and little sister were sleeping, Tuck had a pile of snow and ice inside of their igloo. He formed it and shaped it and formed it and shaped it and carved it. And then he had it s small enough that he slid it through the opening, the door of the ice house, and stood it up and finished carving. The bear was asleep. Now when he finished packing ice and snow and carving, much the way you would make a snowman, but this looked like an enormous bear. And it was all white because it was snow. And when Tuck carved the bear's face, he had the bear's mouth open and icicles for teeth. He made that sculpture look just like a polar bear. Then quickly, when he saw the polar bear was stirring, Tuck crawled back through the opening and safely into the ice house. Then he looked out through the small window as the bear started to awaken. The bear was sleepy and was stretching. <sighs> he looked around, he looked into the ice house, nothing was happening. Then he looked over to the side and saw an enormous polar bear, even larger than he was, with his mouth full of sharp teeth open. That real polar bear turned and ran as fast as he could and he didn't come back. And that is the way Tuck saved his family. All right, here is a song about snow. And it comes, the tune comes from a popular song that the chorus goes like, let it snow, let it snow, let it snow. Now I took that popular song and I changed the words. I call that decomposing the song. And I made words that were suitable for kids. And this song is about two best friends and they get together when it snows. Oh, the weather outside is roaring and my house is really boring. So your house is the place to go Let it snow, let it snow, let it snow It doesn't show signs of stopping And I brought us some corn for popping Turn on our favorite TV show Let it snow, let it snow, let it snow When your mom makes me say goodnight I 
boots on your welcome mat Let's go sliding tomorrow Let us know, let us know, let us know Let us know This book is entitled Tacky and the Winter Games, <clears throat> written by Helen Lester and illustrated by Lynn Munsinger. Now Tacky is a penguin and I love his stories. And if you like this story, there are lots of other books about Tacky. Now, some of you have probably been watching the Olympics or at least some of the Olympics on television. Well, in this story, Tacky's group decides they will have their own winter games. A huff and a puff and a huff and a puff and a huff and a puff. What's happening? blared Tacky the penguin as he came across his companions, goodly, lovely, angel, neatly, and perfect. We're huff training, puff training, they replied. Training, wondered Tacky, hopefully, ah, uh, as in choo-choo? No, training like athletes. The winter games are coming, and we must, must, must be in shape to win, win, win. Looking closely at Tacky, not the fittest of birds, they added, let's get going. So, the penguins trained. They raced up steep hills. <laughs> they jumped rope. They did 100 sit-ups a day. Now you see Tacky back there sleeping on his mat. In each picture, he's messing up. <laughs> they lifted weights. Now look what he's lifting with his foot, a little tiny weight. They rode bikes. They ate special training meals. They're all eating spinach, and he's eating pizza and donuts and potato chips. They kept strict training hours. All right, the others are all in bed at an early hour, and he's staying up late with popcorn, watching TV, and playing with toys. Most of all, they practiced their events bobsled racing, speed skating, and finally, after weeks of work, Team Nice Icy Land was ready for the long waddle to the Winter Games, and off they went. Rat-a-tat-tat, rat-a-tat-tat, -tat. the athletes marched into the stadium for the opening ceremonies. Teams had come from far and wide. They came from the highlands, the lowlands, the funlands, and of course, the nice icy land. Rat-a-tat-tat, rat-a-tat-tat. -tat. On they marched, ratty tatty tatty boom be ratty tatty boom hey. Tacky marched to a different drummer. You see him there on his head, holding the flag with his feet. For the big show, the penguins all joined in singing the Winter Games anthem. With our beaks held high and our bellies held low, we'll do our best in the ice and snow. With a yodel waddle ho and a yodel waddle he, may the best team win and let's hope it's we. After lighting the torch and exchanging high flippers as a sign of friendship, the athletes filed out past the display of medals. So you see the first medal is not bad, the second one is pretty good, and the third one is big winner. The sun rose, eager penguins prepared for the first event the bobsledless race. Little webbed feet wrapped around big penguin tummies. Pop, they were off. Tacky was way off. Looking at the wonderful hill before him, he cried, great for belly sliding. And with that, he charged under 
his surprise teammates and sped them down crossing the finish time in record time. But wait, the official announced, this is a bobsled less race. You have a bobsled. Goodly, lovely, angel, neatly, and perfect tried to explain that it was not a bobsled, it was a penguin. Doesn't look much like a penguin to me, said the official, examining Tacky. Not much like a bobsled either. Don't know what it is. Anyway, no medals for you. Illegal equipment. So no medals per team nice icy land yet. In the afternoon, the athletes strapped frozen fish on their feet for the ski jumping event. While the jumpers waited for their turns, Tacky spent just a few moments in the hut toasting his toes by the fire. Weren't winter sports wonderful? Swoop, plop, swoop, plop, swoop, plop. One after another, the athletes made graceful jumps and lovely landings. Plippy, ploppy, plippy, ploppy. What is this? It looks like Tacky's fish have melted. Tacky's fish have become thawed by the warmth of the fire and were now flopping wildly. He made a higher jump than he had intended and lots of landings. No medals for Team Nice Icy Land yet. That evening, the speed skating relay race was the final event. Last chance, Tacky, warned goodly, lovely, angel, neatly, and perfect, who looked mighty aerodynamic in their costumes. Tacky looked mighty, well, tacky. The other teams had already finished, and their times were very fast. Now it was Team Nice Icy Land's turn. Pop! Off they went! One by one, Tacky's companions took a turn round the rink. Goodly passed the baton to Lovely, who passed the baton to Angel, who passed the baton to Neatly, who passed the baton to Perfect, who passed the baton to Tacky, who said, thank you, and ate it. Ate it? Ate it? Well, it looked like a hot dog. His companions wailed, you, you ate, you ate the, you ate the baton. And in frustration, they began to chase him around the rink. Tag, cried Tacky. He loved nothing better than a good game of tag. So he skated faster and faster and faster and faster and barreled across the finish line in record time. But wait, had Team Nice Icy Land really won? Did Tacky have the baton? Without the baton, Team Nice Icy Land would be disqualified. Out came the medics. Off went Tacky on the stretcher and under the eye of the big x-ray machine. They x-rayed his bottom portion. Nope, nothing there. <laughs> they x-rayed his top. Certainly nothing there. You see nothing but spider webs in his brain. <laughs> they x-rayed his middle and yes, there it was. There was the baton. Goodly, lovely, angel, neatly, and perfect, hugged Tacky. Tacky was an odd bird, but a nice bird to have around. And that is the story of Tacky and the Winter Games. Thanks for tuning in today to Tuck and Tacky on the Tundra. Now, the next Serendipity program is going to be on Thursday, March 10th, and the title of that program is A French Celebration with enchanting French stories, French songs, and we're going to make some magical, delicious 
French breakfast muffins. So I hope I'll see you then.